Welcome to the Rusted Garden. Today I want to show you how to make a rusted spaghetti sauce or a rustic pasta sauce for your garden from your heirloom tomatoes. These are orange Kentucky beef steaks. I just got back from vacation and I have a lot of large tomatoes that I need to eat. And one of the best ways to use your heirlooms is to create a rustic pasta sauce. And basically what you're going to do is in a bowl, I also save the seeds. So I'm going to save these seeds for next year is cut out the pieces of the tomato you don't want in your sauce and basically whoops basically de-seed your tomato in a separate bowl we're not going to eat this as well turn into um, seeds that I'm going to ferment in a mason jar and I'll have for next year. I have a video that shows you how to do that but you're basically chunking out your tomatoes removing the seeds, removing the liquid. When you make a spaghetti sauce, you really definitely don't want the seeds in there. Seeds will make your pasta sauces bitter and you don't need the liquid. The uh, strength of the tomato sauce is going to come out of the meat and the flesh of the tomato. So I have several one pound heirlooms and you just cut out the parts you don't want in the sauce chunk the tomato and just de-seed it. I'm going to do that. It does not need to be pretty. You put your pieces that have been de-seeded and you know break off what you don't want in the sauce. The pieces that have been de-seeded right into the pot that you're going to cook them in. Now this is a rustic spaghetti sauce because I'm not going to peel the skins. I'm not going to puree it into a, a puree where your sauce will be much smoother and finer. I'm just going to make it rustic style. And as I was talking I noticed I accidentally put some seeds right into there so I'll just scoop those out. And you can see all the chambers where the gel and the seeds are. And there'll be plenty of seeds for me to use next year. So I also have this one pound tomato. The heirlooms do get kind of ugly, but they're great tasting. I'm going to put in the green piece too. That's all right to have some green in there. Also, you want to put into the pot that you're going to cook a medium onion and just chunk that up too. You can salt and pepper your rustic sauce to taste. I also like putting in two cloves of garlic. The garlic press really will save you time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to chunk the rest of these and then I'll show you the rest of the process. So I de-seeded uh, about, I don't know, two or three pounds of heirloom tomatoes, chunked up an onion, put in some garlic, and basically all you're going to do is, is you're going to boil it down. I did leave the skin on here. This is a rustic sauce. This is a quick sauce. It should take about 30 minutes to make from start to finish, maybe 45 minutes with the peeling and everything. I mean, typically when you make a tomato sauce, you de-seed the tomato, you peel the skin, you boil down the tomato, you puree it, you strain it, and you come out with a really nice, fine sauce. However, I don't always have that time. What I'm doing right now before it gets hot is looking for pieces of tomato I don't want in there. I don't have all that time sometimes. So this is a great way to make a fast tomato sauce. You chunk up your tomato, you add some onions, some garlic. You're going to boil this down for about 20 or 30 minutes. It will liquefy. I'll show the process as we're going through. Salt it to taste. Throw in some pepper. Don't over salt it. Don't over season it right now. You can, you know, season it better at the end. But basically you're going to boil this down for about 20 minutes. 
you can see it's already starting to get liquidy. You don't need to add any water or anything to it. This is all just the tomato sauce. Oh, see some oil burning off under there. So I'm going to boil this down and I'll be back. And I just wanted to show you, this is about five minutes into the process and you can see all the liquid that's coming out of the tomato. And you're basically just going to boil this down um, to by one half to even maybe by two thirds. To really concentrate the flavor, you'll see the tomato meat and the skin will all get broken up and you'll have a nice rustic sauce. The onions will soften out. Uh, it'll be chunky style, but that's what I like. And this will go over better pasta. Now just keep an eye on it. Like I said, you know, depending on what you're boiling at or how you're simmering it, 20 to 30 minutes to get, to get it close to where it needs to be. This rustic sauce has been reducing for about 15 minutes. You can see I did add some dry herbs. You can see when you mix it up, you can see that the tomato is breaking down. It's getting chunky. You can see maybe like, let's see if I can get it. That's the skin and it's peeling off. It tastes fine. I like the skin for the benefits of nutrition. Again, this is not a pureed smooth sauce, it's a rustic sauce. At this point, about 15 minutes in, add about a tablespoon of olive oil and add your dry herbs. I put in oregano. You put in the dry herbs now so that they rehydrate, absorb a lot of the liquid, and let this continue to simmer. At the end, you're gonna add your fresh herbs. The rustic sauce has been boiling about 30 minutes and you can see that it's starting to thicken up nicely. And like I said, keep stirring it and as you stir it, you can press it against the pot and just break it up. But it's starting to get to that point in another five minutes or so, it'll be thick enough. And again, you're just reducing this down by a half to two thirds boiling the liquid out essentially and you can see everything is breaking up nicely. At about this point you want to put your pasta on and this is a gamelli. It's a pretty sturdy pasta. You want something that's hearty in itself with this sauce. I'm also going to add in fresh oregano, fresh basil, and some cherry tomatoes right at the end and I'll show you that uh, as the sauce finishes up. This is the juice and the seeds from the Kentucky orange tomato. These will ferment for about five to seven days and my seeds will be able to be stored and saved for next year and again I have a video to show you that. But as you get down to about the last five minutes of this uh, reduction you want to put your pasta on and get that started. The rustic sauce has simmered down for about 40 minutes. It took longer than I thought. There was a lot of tomatoes in there. And you can see how thick it is. At this point it's done. And what I want to do is I'm going to take some cherry tomatoes uh, from the garden too. That'll add some color and some nice chunk to it. And I'm just going to you know, slice them up, put them right in. And I don't want to boil these down to the point that they break apart, so that's why I'm adding them at the end. I added uh, oregano earlier, and here's some more oregano from the garden. And what I do at this point, and again in the last five minutes, is just break the leaves off of some of my oregano and put it in there. That'll add texture and flavor. And the reason that you put the fresh herbs in right at the I'm going to repeat myself quickly. The memory card ran out, so I'm not sure how much got missed. But we're at the last five minutes of this. The sauce has thickened up. And what I added into there was some cherry tomatoes cut in half. And I don't want the cherry tomatoes to boil down because I want them to stay uh, in shape. I don't want them to break apart. I also just added some fresh oregano. You want to add your fresh herbs right at the end in the last five minutes. You don't want them to boil away for the whole 20, 30, 40 minutes, depending how many tomatoes you're cooking down, because the flavor will boil out. I'm also going to add some basil, and I'm, this is a rustic style, so I'm just putting in the full leaves. That'll add great flavor. I'm going to also add purple, uh, purple ruffled basil. 
It'll add texture, flavor, and color. And I'm going to mix that in. And I'll let this, this is on low now, I'll let it simmer for about five more minutes to uh, warm everything through. Because this is a reduction, you don't want to season the tomatoes in the beginning to taste because as it reduces, the salt and the pepper will concentrate. So I did put some salt in there to start, but now's the point that you taste it and decide what you need in it. And I do need a little bit more salt. I do want some more pepper, I did taste it. At this point too, you can add in a little more olive oil. And you just mix it through. And this is your, your rustic sauce. The pasta's finished up. I did plate that and I will you know, get this sauce to it in a second. When you're using you know, a heavier sauce, this rustic type sauce, you want to use um, pasta that has some body to it, like the gamelli, rigatoni. If you're using spaghetti, you want to use linguini, linguini or fettuccine. So here's the pasta. It's al dente, olive oiled up just a little bit. We've got some wine, some bread. Let me get the sauce. And your rustic sauce, you're just going to put right on top. And you let it simmer with the herbs and the sliced cherry tomatoes for about five minutes. And just cover up your pasta. This is a great way to use your heirlooms. It's a great way to make a pasta sauce without spending a long time preparing it. And this was the orange Kentucky beef steak. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my blog at www.therustedgarden.blogspot.com and check out my YouTube videos. I have over 70 garden videos to show you how to grow vegetables and also recipe videos now to show you how to prepare them. Thanks.